general manager of the Upper Niagara Light Natural Resources District here at, at Lothian Chadron. And we're here today to talk about the proposed change to the rules and regulations. Um, I see most of you are probably aware of that, but if you're not, if you're here for lunch, you might want to go next door to Country Kitchen. What we're going to do first is we're going to go through the changes on the rules and regulations that have been proposed and uh, just kind of highlight what has been being changed and what has been in there the whole time. Things have not been actually, there are things that have not been proposed changes. Can everybody hear me, by the way? Hopefully. I have kids, so I have a tendency to yell quite a bit and repeat myself, so hopefully that helps a little bit. Um, after this, we, we, we can allow a little bit of time for some questions um, in, in, as I get done with this. However, I'm not sure how much time we are going to have. We do need to start our public hearing on the rules and regulations right at 2.30 or a little bit before if there's not any rules or if there's not any questions. So, without further ado, uh, we have the draft of our groundwater management area rules and regulations. Um, <coughs> The highlighted areas are the ones that are being proposed changes. I do want to point that out. One of the major things that the rules and regs do is they refer to uh, the Chemigation Act and, and will do some uh, regulating of chemigation as directed by the Department of Environmental Quality. Unfortunately, the regulations in the past have not had this in there, so we needed to include this in language in there to be consistent with Title 195, which is a statute or a, a regulations that are um, the Department of Environmental Quality administers. You guys see all these cords up here? Don't laugh when I fall, okay? Second thing we're talking about. Another reference to the, the Chemigation Act, uh, that the, the district can adopt rules and regulations in accordance with the Chemigation Act. However, they do have to be reviewed and approved by the Department of Environmental Quality. <coughs> The next portion of the, of the rules is a summary of what has gone on in the last several years as far as integrated management. This highlighted area that the district board and director may choose to implement phases earlier, this is nothing that is new to the entire rules and regulations. It was just put in this section up in front because it was, it was in the back and it's been there since uh, about 2006. Since this was a complete summary of the rules and regulations ahead of time, the, the staff, or the staff suggested moving it up to let it out, or to get it out there in front. On the definitions, there was a, a definition added of annualized allocation and annual allocation. These two definitions were put in there in case there are circumstances where somebody in an allocation area did not start for one reason or the other with a full allocation of whatever that is. This way the board actually had a method to determine what that annual number was and could start somebody in the middle of an allocation period without going to one end or the other. <coughs> the definition of best management practice was added. This was not in there. Uh, this comes straight out of the state statutes. Uh, nothing that, that the district did on its own. It was again something that was remiss and was put in there. One unit for allocation was, was something that was added to the was to the definition it means the allocation for the combined purposes of recording water use for irrigation crops. And this is done in Rule 16 where it talks about one unit allocation. As you can see, a lot of the definitions have not changed. As far as the enforcement, this is in Rule 6. This is, describes how the enforcement of these rules and regulations are conducted by the district. Because we're adding information on chemigation, we had to refer to the Chemigation Act, where enforcement can take place by the district in this regard. Within the definition is also added that a compliance inspector, which is usually going to be an employee of the, of the district, can be authorized to conduct a prompt chemigation inspection without consent or warrant if an emergency situation exists. In other words, this comes straight from the, the Chemigation Act or the Chemigation Act and Title 195. If there's an emergency, if there's an imminent threat to life and the environment, then we can do an inspection and try to get the situation corrected immediately without having to contact the owner or the operator. Thank <laughs> you. 
again, another reference to the Nebraska Communication Act, just where we have everywhere within the, the rules and regulations where there is a need to uh, reference the act, we had to add that in there because it wasn't in the past. Another change that, that was added was uh, the cumulative spring static water level increased to above the 1990 level and stay above the 1990 level for a period of five to six years. The board may vote to be less restrictive in their allocation schemes or within the phase areas. This was not in there before. So it's, it's actually crediting for an improvement in the situation of groundwater in areas. And that's for, that was for phase two, which is the three foot level. This is for phase three. And again, it's about, if the accumulated spring level increases to above the six foot level, above 1990, then the board may move it out of a phase area or be less restrictive. <coughs> uh, another reference of water wells that are, are subject to the revised statute are not subject to a moratorium. Usually there's gonna be a commercial well. Uh, but they are subject to board approval and consumptive use from these may require an offset prior to final approval. So if a commercial operation comes in and needs water, they may be required to find an offset for the use that they're, that they're going to uh, undertake consumptive use. Again, another reference to municipal industrial wells that any increase in consumptive use may require an offset. In regard to transfers, this is the guidelines for groundwater transfers, uh, that certified uses are going to be evaluated prior to allowing transfers. One of the issues that the, the staff is finding is that when we have some transfer issues, people come in, you've got certified acres, you've got taxed acres, and you've got what's actually irrigated. What we're trying to do is going to look at those three scenarios, or potentially three scenarios, and try to figure out what's the correct number of acres that we're doing and try to clean that up so we get all those those three numbers the same as opposed to having the, the different ones and, and somebody thinks they're being taxed on something, somebody thinks they're certified for something, <coughs> and the district thinks they're doing it. So we're just trying to make everything nice and clean, I guess, if you will. Uh, an emergency transfer was included this time. The emergency transfer is, is, a, is, a, is a transfer that can be authorized by the general manager or their designee in a situation where we may not have time to have a board meeting. For example, we have a, a board meeting on Thursday, somebody comes in on the following Friday, says I need, emer I need a transfer, they would have to wait until the next board meeting for that to take place. This actually allows the general manager in an emergency situation to allow that transfer and then the board would ratify it at the next meeting. Transfer is a type of use. Uh, this was this was added based on some of the potential changes that we may see with uh, with drilling, uh, uh, for fracking water, etc. That a change in type of use may require an annual allocation that is lower, provide an offset or the added use. Again, it all depends on the use and what's provided forward. Trying to make sure our consumptive use uh, stays fairly consistent. And then, if a, if a person is changing their registration. With the, with the Department of Natural Resources, they also need to make a copy of the change of that use uh, to the district. Well, this is added on flow meters. <laughs> that flow meters may be periodically inspected and evaluated by the district for performance accuracy. That means if somebody has a question as to whether their meter is being accurate, if, it, if it's close to the number, that the district can actually go out there and evaluate it using an ultrasonic meter or other methods, be it electric use or, or pumpage, to determine if, if that meter is actually reading the number and the numbers are giving us uh, what they say they are. Uh, the, the, the new rule regulations are still not going to have pooling in there. However, 
that certified acres are irrigated from the same regulated well prior to January 1st will be considered one unit. That gets back to their definition. So if they're physically tied together and worse so, they can be considered one unit and they can be um, irrigated as such. As far as allocations, the proposal, uh, the, the district has been in two allocations for sub areas four and six. That ends in 2014. This is the last year of that allocation. So the allocation for would not start until for, for any areas uh, until A approved or uh, worked on and then for um, January 1st, 2015. The changes, the proposed changes are going to go to a five year allocation scheme. So from 2015 to 2019, five crop years. And for sub areas four and six, the proposal is going to be for 65 inches for that five year period. And then for the, for the, the remaining, that's for sub areas four and six. For, for sub areas one, two, three, and five, the proposal is for 75 acre inches for a five year period as well, which is an annualized allocation of 15 inches. And then any use that did not exist at the start uh, will receive the annualized allocation. Uh, again, for some reason, if uh, th there, there was a, a, um, a correction in the certified acres and we needed to figure out what those additions would be, they would work off that annualized allocations. And I believe that's it. <clears throat> that's quick, quick and dirty how we ran, uh, that I did run through it. Um, I would take some time for any questions you may have. I can't say that I can answer all of them. Uh, Lynn is here as well, but he's not talking very well. We might have to put him on the microphone, but is any, is he, he's not here? Oh, he's hiding in the corner, okay. Um, but does anybody have any questions? Hearing none. I have a question. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Mushroom carry over 27 inches, correct? At this time, that's 50% of the current allocation. So in this situation, it would be 27 inches. Thank you. Yes, sir. Well, if I understand this correctly, then in 2015, when we got a carry over, you're going to take half of that away? No. Get out of here. No. If, if you got, the question is, um, in 2015, whatever they have left, they're going to take half of the way. It's 50% of the current allocation. So if you have 24 inches, you get 24. But if you have 30, it gets dropped down to 27. So it all depends on where you're at with your current, what's left at the end of 15. Okay. It's 50% of the current allocation, which is 54 inches. Okay, if, I, if I've got 50 inches of water mm -hmm. in 2015, what does that go to? 27 inches. So you're going to see a lot less water. It's, it's, it's right. dro dropping down to 27 yeah. inches. I've been conserving this water for years and years. So that I've got water and you're going to take it away from me now? That's the proposed rule. And who did that? Who made that? Rule? It's been in the it's been in the rules and regs for. Who made that? Put her name on it. What board? This board. The board of directors. Yes. You fellows did that to us. You took half our water away. What are you thinking of? <laughs> Why are we conserving our water? Sure. I need to clarify that you get to save everything up to 50 percent of the allocation. So anything under. 27 inches that you've saved will be kept. It's if you have beyond 27 inches. Yes. The, the NRD is responsible for the groundwater management. The, the Department of Natural Resources is responsible for the surface water. So why in this stormwater management plan are you, this NRD, taking on the responsibility of the surface water and the responsibility of the compact between Nebraska, Wyoming and Nebraska. We're not, the proposed rules and regulations do not address surface water, it's only groundwater. And the state of Nebraska does administer the compact. It does, but you state in that stormwater management plan, or groundwater management plan, that you are. That's in our integrated management plan that we're working jointly with the department to manage both surface and groundwater. Anything else? Yes. Um, I guess more or less the same question. Why are why are we 
restricted to 50 percent carry. I mean, why don't we get to carry at all? That was the proposed rules way back when. So, so can that be amended? All the rules and regulations are always open for amendment. Okay. Through this board. Through this board. Okay. <coughs> So we have to make an uh, approach to the board and ask them to make an amendment to change that. You can come in and talk to staff and we can take it to the board for you. I mean, we can set up a meeting and the board you can address the board at, at any one of our board meetings. Well, we also do that. Yeah. At your testimony, you can do that, yes. Yes. Anything else? Yes, sir. Not our restricted wells are no longer. Our unrestricted wells. I don't. I don't uh, understand. Some district three, I think. There's a well moratorium still on the district. <coughs> yeah, there I are. understand that, but there's no bumper moratorium until what you want. Correct. Correct. Also, the, the reasoning behind that. Uh, do, do you have any information on? A water droppage of the test wells? I'm not going to speak on behalf of the board. I mean, that, that's something that you'll have to address in the testimony. So that isn't public information? Right? Oh, yeah. All our information is public. Then why don't you know it? I, I didn't say I didn't know anything. I said I'm not going to speak on behalf of the board. The board has, has brought this proposal forward, and they're the ones who vote and make the decision. I'm their employee. Oh. So I have to ask the board for what the water table is dropped no, in. No, we can get you that information. That's what I'm asking. Yes. You know that, you can't. No, I didn't. I said, I said, you asked me what the justification for the allocation was. Well, what the water drop was. I'd have to pull it up. I don't have it in front of me. So that's not going to be discussed in any of this? It, we, the information was brought forward in the public information session that we held on, on February 11th. And back in I'm sorry, I wasn't there. We can, we, we can share that information with you. We're going to keep the record open until March 10th if you'd like it. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Yes, please. Um, is in any way the board or you as general manager or staff concerned with the river flows in any of these sub areas? Or are you just concerned directly with the groundwater? As, as I indicated, we do have an integrated management plan that was developed jointly with the Department of Natural Resources. And that integrated management plan was to work with, with the department to maintain both surface water flows and groundwater levels. So you're telling me yes? Yes. That. But as far as, for as, far as flows, correct? Regu yes. As far as regulation, though, Regulation of surface water is with the Department of Natural Resources. Regulation of groundwater is with the, the um, NRD. Yes? Okay, I got one more question. Uh, going back to this allocation thing that we talked about a bit ago, do you have a recommendation to the board as to what they should do? We provide data and information. <coughs> We'll go ahead and call this public meeting or public hearing to order. It is to discuss the proposed changes to groundwater management rules and regulations. This is a meeting of the Upper Narborough White Natural Resource District. If anybody is interested, we have uh, the Open Meetings Act, which we will be following. That is on the back table if you would like to view that. I would have to ask, does anybody who has any special needs as far as testimony? Again, my name is Patrick O'Brien. I'm the general manager of the Upper Narborough White Natural Resources District. On my far left is Steve Stam Sandberg, director, Dave Carlson, director, John Burke, director. Off to my right is Scott Burnt, Kevin Oldmiller, Curtis Roth, and Todd Dorvors, also directors of the NRD. The meeting today is being recorded 
uh, both video and audio. And also we have a, a, another recorder over there who is not an NRD recorder. It was actually came in from the public. The purpose of the meeting today is to accept testimony on the proposed rules and regulations for groundwater management within the Upper Niagara Borough White Natural Resources District. The rules and regulations were presented to a Citizens Advisory Committee meeting that was held on December 18, 2013, right here at Country Kitchen. There are also two public information sessions held on February 11, 2014, one in Hemingford and one in Rushville. Copies of the proposed rules and regulations have been available at the NRD offices and available for public viewing and mailing. As far as the rules of conduct we're working under today, please silence all your cell phones or put them on vibrate. I like to see everybody reaching into their pockets after that. It's quite interesting. Um, they're, they're, please refrain from any displays of support or opposition like cheering, clapping, booing, whatever. Hold on to that. Please not try to disrupt the presenter up there so everyone can have full opportunity to hear their presentation. If I would ask how many people plan on testifying today? Okay. Right now, I think we can avoid from using a, a time system. <coughs> Uh, will allow everybody uh, ample opportunity. I would ask you to keep your comments to approximately 10 minutes or so. When you get to the end of that 10 minutes, if you do have some extra information, or if you do have some other information, we may try to have you cut it short a little bit. Uh, we would ask you to keep on track and focus on the current rules and regulations that we're discussing today. If someone ahead of you has, has had testimony, please not try to repeat that. Simply state, I agree with so-and-so, or add to it, I agree with so-and-so, and would like to add the following. If you do have a copy of your testimony as written, please hand that in to me. I will mark it, and if you haven't signed, put your name on it, please put your name on it. We'll date it, and I'll, you, it will not be returned. Only testimony from the podium or the, the table up here will be considered official. Again, please not try to offer anything from the audience as it will be disruptive. Testimony today will be received only from individuals. There will be no dialogue with the board. It will not be a back and forth. So if you do have questions, they will not be answered. Uh, we, can, we can try to answer those at a later date, but at this time it's just going to be the individuals presenting testimony. There is no order to testimony, so it, I, know, I know there was a sign-in sheet in the past. Please proceed accordingly when, there, when there's a time up there or, or the seat is available. When testifying, please start by stating and spelling your name for us. And if you forget to do that, I will remind you to, or I'll stop you and do that. So I apologize for being rude if, uh, if it does seem that way. As far as what goes on um, in the future after this hearing, written testimony <coughs> will be accepted until 5 p.m. on March 10, 2014. After that, the board will receive all the information and will make their decision sometime in the future. As far as the record that we're maintaining for the for this public uh, hearing, we have entered, entered into the hearing so far are the proposed rules and regulations, the proof of publication from the Shattern record, there was a letter from the Nebraska Department of Environmental Quality, a letter from the Nebraska Department of Natural Resources, and a letter designated Patrick <coughs> O'Brien as a hearing officer. With that, we'll go ahead and have everybody start proceeding forward for your testimony. <coughs> County. I own two pivots in Subdistrict 2 and I'm in a partnership that owns two pivots in Subdistrict 5. These comments are a follow-up to my comments made during the last board meeting, which I would like to have added to the record of this meeting. I'll give you a copy. I want to summarize the issue causing the greatest concern. For those of us in the Upper Niagara White NRD that are not regulated, you are proposing to regulate us at 75 inches over a five-year period, or 15 inches per year on average. 
Your proposed allocation changes are in conflict with your integrated management plan dated 71401 and your rules and regulations dated 9801 as approved by the Board of Directors <coughs> in uh, the summer of 11 and the Department of Natural Resources. Nothing has happened to trigger any change in regulation as required by these documents. This basic fact was confirmed by NRD staff. You do not have the right to make decisions in conflict with these documents. If implemented, irreparable damage will be caused to producers and the local economy. The following excer excerpts from the integrated management plan are provided to refresh your memories as many of you were actively involved in its approval. Quote, if static water levels within a sub-area meet or exceed a trigger for entering a different phase of the groundwater, groundwater management plan, that sub-area mm -hmm. will enter the new management, plan, management phase directly. Monitoring and management of integrated water resources will be conducted within sub-area, sub-district boundaries, allowing for controls to be implemented as needed, not as a one-size-fits-all approach. To manage surface and groundwater supplies so that the existing agricultural activities are preserved to maintain the economic viability for both the long term and the short term. To monitor district streams, close monitoring to record the effect of drought. To investigate in cooperation with the state of Wyoming uses since 1969 that may be reducing inflows into the Niagara River. To utilize the best available information, data, science, and methodologies for the purpose of integrated management. The controls may not be modified in such a manner as to conflict with the goals and objectives of this integrated management plan. If declines are attributed to below average precipitation, then close monitoring will continue to record the effects of the drought. To use the best available information, data, science, and methodologies for the purpose of integrated water management utilizing the best available science. <clears throat> These are a few excerpts from the approved integrated management plan that I stress was approved by the state. It is my understanding that the deliberations of the water committee were not guided by any outside professional hydrologists, geologists, agronomists, economists, and or attorneys. The main board approved the water committee's recommendation with little public evidence of debate or deliberation. It is safe to say that because of this, today we are all witnessing the largest gathering of amateur hydrologists and Philadelphia lawyers ever assembled in one room. I and several of my fellow producers have met with some of you in the past two weeks, and I thank those of you who took the time to meet with us and to hear our position. I do not feel that all of you have made your minds up yet, but I know some of you definitely have. I have talked to several producers who chose not to come today because they felt the decision was made and no public hearing would change it. I hope they are wrong and that this hearing will be different. However, because this is such a big issue for the local economy, we assume the worst and proceed accordingly. In short, I and others like me are just as nervous about you as you seem to be about the state of Nebraska. Consequently, we will resist this unjust proposal. Regarding the facts, your IMP does not require or allow you to regulate groundwater until certain triggers are reached. These triggers compare current recharge levels against the 1990 static water baseline. According to the data and the facts and the NRD staff, none of these triggering events has occurred in subdistricts 1, 2, 3, and 5. In fact, the water levels in subdistricts 1, 3, and 5 are actually above the 1990 data. I direct your information to the charts received from NRD staff, and I believe used during the public information session, which I will review quickly with you now. This is basically the Upper Niagara, Upper Niagara White River NRD area. This is area one, kind of above the Pine Ridge. This is area five, kind of along the river. 
Area 6 is the Box Butte area. Area 3 is the Ellsworth area. Area 2 stretches from south of Shattern all the way to the northeast corner, Sheridan County. Uh, Subdistrict 6 is Mineraj Flats. These are the hydrographs provided by your staff. This red line here is the 1990 static water level. This reading was taken last year on all these on all these graphs at the end of the worst drought we've had in 100 years. So in area one, the water table is in fact above the 1990 level. In area five, the Niagara River area, it's actually above the 1990 level. In area two, it's below the 1990 level. Uh, at the end of the drought, it was three feet below. The year before, it was a foot below. We're all wondering why people would make decisions at the end of the drought and not wait until the wells were measured this month. Subdistrict 3 is above the 1990 water level. Subdistrict 6, the flats, is steadily declining with a little rebound in 2010. Section 4, the Box Butte area, is in steady decline. These are facts. Uh, <coughs> these areas that you want to regulate have not hit any management triggers, so we don't know why you're doing it. In summary, I do not believe you have the right to regulate subdistricts 1, 2, 3, and 5 as they have not met the triggers required by your integrated management plan. I believe some of you are still deliberating. I know some of you have decided that if you are regulated, everybody should be regulated. I know some of you are afraid that if you don't do something, the state of Nebraska will. These last two points I don't understand. As directors, you have sworn an oath to act faithfully and impartially. As to the state, figuratively speaking, because they might cut off an arm, you seem to think a preemptive strike where we cut off our own arm first makes sense. It does not. I would rather be joined with you in a fight against them than a local fight that pits us against each other. I hope you take it seriously and withdraw this illogical plan. We are quite serious. Mike Machado will follow me to talk about the economics of the area that are affected by this. about the hydrology. 